we're starting with the second one. Cause just like the time travel, it's not gonna make any sense, baby. Yeah. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Austin Powers, the spy who. <laughs> Hi guys, this is my review for Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Why am I reviewing the second one? I tried to watch the first one just recently, but I fell asleep halfway through it. No, falls of the films, I just I just fell asleep, I was really tired. My god, is this like a damn time capsule. There's a reason why this movie is still memed today. Despite the fact that these movies, except for the third one, are over 20 years old, they still hold up. Some parts don't. There are a few jokes that just go on too long. There's a few jokes that definitely have not aged well. Holy shit, there are so many in this film that still make me laugh. The first one in particular is when the female assassin tries to take out Austin and he keeps on using her as a human shield. To the point where they're falling and she's like, the fire will kill us both powers! He's just like, ah, get in my way, bitch! <laughs> oh, the other part where Will Ferrell falls off the cliff. Or Fat Bastard, like my god, I actually really appreciate Fat Bastard more. I thought he was disgusting then, he's disgusting now still. But I gotta give really good props to the production team and the costume and the makeup guys for making a pretty realistic fat suit for Mike Myers. That's something else too, to see Mike Myers be as popular as he was, that he could get away with his character, his evil character, having a giant inflatable earth and throwing it at Rob Lowe's face over and over and over again. For any of you who know the behind the scenes stories about Rob Lowe, well, to put it in perspective, you know his character from Parks and Rec? Essentially, from a lot of the stories that I've heard from different people who have worked with him on different film projects, he's the exact opposite of that in real life. There's also a bunch of product placement that is a complete joke at the whole idea of what product placement is. The fact that Starbucks is their super secret lair in the Seattle Tower is just the joke's still so good after all of these years. The soundtrack of this film is kind of like hanging grapefruit, but it's all still good. Like, it's all songs we know, but it's still really enjoyable. The pacing of the movie is actually not the worst considering how many times it deviates. And there are so many deviations. Like, the random part where Dr. Evil and, Lil and Mini Me do two songs back to back together, which... The film continually dates itself throughout your entire viewing to the point where you are full on back into the idea and the mentality of what it was like to watch Austin Powers, other SNL movies. There was a lot of vibes of what it felt like to watch an early 90s Adam Sandler movie in this movie. It took me that far back. Unlocked a level of nostalgia that I haven't felt in so goddamn long. You gotta give the movie credit. I enjoy this movie immensely. The, some of the jokes still kill me. There's some now that I get a little bit more. And some of the fourth wall breaks, while actually a lot more so in this film than I remember them being, there's some really good ones. Like even in the, the credits when they're showing all the additional scenes, there's the past Austin with future Austin and they're both kind of like joking about banging uh, Heather Graham. And then at the very end, he's like paging Dr. Freud. And he's like, oh, fudge, that's actually really good. There's a lot of jokes that have aged pretty well. There are some that have aged terribly. And this is honestly a giant catalyst as to why this film could not be made again. That's why there's never been a fourth movie. Aside from Mike Myers doing a pretty decent job at self-career sabotage. I honestly don't think the guy will ever be able to make a movie again. It's been a while since The Love Guru. I would have thought that something might have turned around by now, but... Is it my favorite one in the series? I, I like one and two a lot. It's been a while since I've seen three, so I'll either watch that one next or I'll watch it last for me it's a pretty fun product of the time people who watch the movie now might not enjoy it as much might get a bit offended by it and eh. this is what it was like to grow up in the 90s and sometimes just live a little either way guys i'm gonna give the spy who shagged me a five out of seven I'm, i i like it that much i can appreciate a comedy that will still make me laugh well after i've seen it for me that doesn't happen too much that's why i don't watch comedies a lot because I can remember the joke so well. 
but this movie, despite its age, still makes me laugh, and that that's a pretty good show of its durability. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe, baby. Oh, that was terrible. Anyway, see you guys later. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.